Hello friends, I'm Abby and today I will be talking about the books that I bought in the month of September. I'm going to start with my book of the month books. So the first book, which is the like September book of the month book that I chose, was Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. This is a story about a bank robbery that goes wrong and it turns into a hostage situation and it is kind of a comedy on how human everybody is and how life doesn't always go according to plan. I haven't ever read anything by Frederick Bachman, but I am an anxious person, and so anxious people as a title stood out to me. I love this cover, and I've heard wonderful, wonderful things about his writing, so I am very excited to get into this because I think that it's going to be a very relevant piece of fiction that feels poignant to me and I've heard his writing described as charming and I'm just looking forward to having a new author to read about and look into because I have heard great things about Bear Town and a man called Uwe. I've also been hearing wonderful things about this so I'm happy I've picked it. I did two add-ons for my book of the month of September which is the most add-ons you're allowed to choose but I'm very happy about my choices. So the first one was Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Moreno-Garcia. I read this a couple months ago and I absolutely fell in love. It is a story about a woman named Cassiopeia who accidentally unleashes a god of the dead that her grandfather was keeping trapped in his room. From that point on, it becomes a story of kind of family struggles, family battles, and an adventure story set in this jazz age in Mexico where Cassiopeia has to help this god of death get back to the underworld to basically take back his reign because his throne has been stolen by his brother. Now the twist kind of plot of this book is that the longer it takes to get this god of death returned to the underworld, the more human he's becoming. And overall it was a very mythological Cinderella-esque story that I really loved. It had a journey, it had some serious adventure plots going on, there was a challenge portion. It was just so beautifully written and such a gorgeous story. I had to own it and of course I got the book of the month edition because you can't get it anywhere cheaper. This book is $26 retail and I got it for $9.99 on book of the month so I'm so ecstatic about it. The next book of the month book I chose was Atomic Love by Jenny Fields. I haven't read this. It's in my TBR for December and it is a Russian Cold War spy romance novel, so kind of a historical fiction romance. And it's set in the Cold War, which I've never read a book set in the Cold War, but I absolutely love spy stories and I've heard that the protagonist in this is a woman and that she is just a strong independent woman and doesn't ever lose her core values so that to me in a romance novel even a historical romance sounds absolutely wonderful and I can't wait to get into this sciency spy setting of the Cold War set in Russia it just sounds so wonderful next I'll tell you about my Amazon first reads choice for September which was Welcome to the United States of Anxiety. I believe I talked about this in my TBR for the month of September. I ended up DNFing it, so it's not that it was bad, it just wasn't what I expected. It's basically a social commentary, like a comedic commentary on anxiety in the US. It focused on Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which I thought would really appeal to me, but I didn't actually connect with it as much as I had hoped to. I figured as a person who lives in America, who has anxiety, who loves psychology, that it would really stand out to me, but it was more just kind of personal stories from the author with comedic input involved and it just didn't resonate with me so I didn't finish it. I read about halfway and then I stopped reading it. Another book I got this month is The Dreamers by Karen Thompson Walker. I've talked about this in previous videos but this is kind of a pandemic story about this little town called San Laura I believe that is basically a small town. Lots of people are connected um, and a virus starts going around that is causing people to fall asleep and not wake up. It's kind of a pandemic story where it follows 
like a certain period of time where they're trying to figure out what is causing it to spread. You're seeing many different perspectives and how different people are handling this viral pandemic. They don't know how it spreads. They don't know what to do when it spreads. They don't know how to isolate it. There's a quarantine involved. And I read this at the beginning of quarantine and it was very timely for me. I absolutely loved it. And I just haven't gotten around to buying it yet. I read it on an ebook earlier on in the quarantine and I haven't bought it yet. So I decided to buy it so I can add it to my collection because it really was poignant and stuck with me. And I still think about it, in, especially in terms of the social situation that we all are living in still. Another book I bought this month was House of Salt and Sorrows by Erin A. Craig. This is a retelling of the 12 dancing princesses and it's essentially a young adult fantasy horror novel that takes place by the sea and it focuses on the remaining sisters because there were 12 sisters and seven of them have disappeared or died and so the remaining sisters are trying to figure out what's going on, solve the mystery, and it gets pretty spooky I hear. I've seen some pretty cool ratings about this. I absolutely love this cover. The end papers are gorgeous. It's a very like masquerade um, under the sea kind of vibes, but definitely more like gothic. So it's described as an eerie retelling full of ghosts and gods and a fascinating waterfront world. And the person who blurbed it on the back also said, I'm reading it from behind my fingers. So this is on my TBR for October. I'm so, so, so excited to read it. And I'll definitely let you know what I think after I get through with it. Next, one of my favorite purchases that I've made this month, Circe by Madeline Miller. I bought the UK hardcover version because it's absolutely stunning. I love the naked cover. It has this like bronze, coppery, beautiful designs that are um, imprinted on the naked cover. I read Song of Achilles and it was my favorite book that I read in the month of August and so I had to pick up Circe. I'm so ready to read it. I love Greek myth retellings and this is a Greek myth retelling of the story of Circe. So Circe is born of a god but is does not have the same gifts as a god and so is kind of rejected and she's off living on her own she's banished to this like remote island and while she's in exile there's a whole bunch of stuff that happens and she's like having this adventure basically her life is a whole adventure while in exile and I am obsessed with Madeline Miller's writing in Song of Achilles, and so I'm sure that this will do very similar things. Will it be as good as Song of Achilles? I don't know if anything can top that, but I'm looking forward to diving into this, and I have my fingers crossed that it can be just as good. Next, I picked up The Pole of the Stars by Emma Donahue. I read Emma Donahue's book, Room, a couple years ago. It's been a really long time out, but I really enjoyed it. And when I saw that she wrote a pandemic book, I had to pick it up. This is set in the 1920s, I believe. So it's 1918 in Dublin. This book spans three days in a women's hospital, a maternity ward, when the great flu is going through. So it is basically a story about women staying alive and pursuing life and hope and love and all of these things that are worth living for in this maternity ward in Dublin during the great flu where this whole pandemic is sweeping through the nation and is killing people left and right. It sounds absolutely lovely. I loved the writing in Room and I'm very much looking forward to getting into this, especially this year while we're all living in a pandemic. Next, I picked up a romance novel, The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. I bought this book for one of my best friends, Mackenzie, for her birthday. And I had to get a copy for myself because it is one of the most highly rated romance novels as well as the most talked about. It's kind of like the quintessential enemies to lovers, hate to love romance trope, which I truly enjoy in books, and so I had to pick it up so that I can read it myself and find out what's going on. As far as I know, this is about two rivals in an office. So it looks like they're both executive assistants of a publishing company, and they both hate each other. There's a lot of rivalry going on in this company, and that rivalry turns into some steaminess. 
I love it. I can't wait to read it. Um, I hope I love it as much as everyone else does because I really, really want to love this one. Next! Boom! The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. <laughs> I bought this Bloomsbury Modern Classics version because it's absolutely gorgeous. For those of you who didn't hear me rave about this book in my August wrap up, The Song of Achilles is the story of Achilles and Patroclus, so it's a Greek myth retelling, and it follows Achilles as he's training to be a hero and his romance with Patroclus. It was absolutely gorgeous. The romance was the most beautiful, heart-wrenching thing that I had read in a long time. I absolutely fell in love with them. You follow them as kids all the way up through like their 20s. This huge war is happening and there's so much tension and just seriousness going on, but their romance is the most beautiful story. It was everything. Clearly, I bought Circe, so I loved it enough to like buy the other books by this author. I just truly love this. I highly recommend Song of Achilles. I also picked up two classic books this month. I picked up The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood and The Color Purple by Alice Walker. Both of these I bought just because I wanted these covers. I didn't own either of these either, so I I wanted to own them, but the covers are stunning. I, I love them. The Color Purple follows two sisters, Celia and Nettie, who are black women in early 20th century Georgia. So they are living in the South in the early 20th century. They're dealing with really tough things like domestic violence, sexual abuse, things like that. And they're separated. So they're kind of writing letters back and forth and staying connected, finding hope, finding joy, finding love, and finding themselves and what they think is worth living for because they are facing so many hard things that they have to find something that represents them and find a life that they think represents them. And it was absolutely gorgeous. I loved it. I haven't read it in years, but I plan to reread it now that I own this beautiful copy. The Handmaid's Tale I just read last year, and it is the story of a dystopian future where birth rates are extremely low and they the society called Gilead comes out of what is today America. So it's set in America, but in a dystopian world. The world of Gilead has basically a hierarchical system of men running everything, and women are either aunts, which means that they're old and can't have children, wives, which are women who are of childbearing age, but are also like higher up women in society, so they are married to the men. There are Marthas, who are young women who are still working usually, but like they can't have children for some reason. And then there's handmaids who are responsible for bearing children. And this world is very intense. There is a lot of pressure to have a child. And if you don't produce a child, there are extreme consequences. It is very male led and male driven and just a very serious book, but it was very moving and striking for me. I connected really well with the writing and with the story itself. And I loved the Hulu series that came out of it. So I really wanted to own it. And I think I'm going to make Brant read it because he's never read it before. Also this month, I picked up The Girl Who Drank the Moon, which I read earlier this month from the library. And I loved it so much that I bought it. I will talk about it in my wrap up. But this is the story of a witch who thinks that people are abandoning their babies in the forest. But what's really happening is the town is leaving a baby in the forest every year as a sacrifice to the witch so that the witch won't destroy their village. That's not what she would do, <laughs> but they don't know that. And so this witch is basically picking up the babies and taking them to a home that will love them. And while she goes, she feeds them starlight because starlight keeps the babies alive and keeps them healthy while they travel. Well, Luna, our main character in this book, is the baby that's left in the forest and Zan, the witch, accidentally feeds her moonlight instead of starlight and then Luna gets some magical powers. Zan decides to keep her and raise her and it's a really beautiful story about a young girl who is learning about herself and her history and it just is so sweet. I had to own it so that I can reread it someday, my kids can read it someday. It was just such a sweet story. And the last book I bought this month is another favorite of mine, and that is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. This is a story 
that's basically a philosophical commentary. It's a philosophical journey about what you would do if you were given the chance to live your life all over again and make one different choice. What could your life look like? How different would it be? Would it be the same? Would you choose to do it all exactly the same or would you make these different choices? And so the premise of the book is that there is a library in between life and death where you go to this library and there are infinite books you basically can choose a different choice to make at some point in your life and you get to live that life and see what that life is like. This book is unlike anything I've ever read before. It was beautiful and I highly recommend it. I also love just a fun fact about it. So in the library, between life and death, all of the books are different shades of green. None of them have a title on them. None of them have an author. They're just green books with no identifying features. And the book itself, when you take the wrap off, has no title, no features. It's just a green book. I think touches like this, when I'm buying a book or when I see a book that's being published, just that little special touch that like now that I've read the book, I know why it is like that and it makes it special and different from other books. I absolutely love it. And on the end papers, it looks like a library book, one of the old fashioned library books where you punch the card and stick it in. It's just, I love special touches like that. It's everything. Okay, the last chunk of books are all books that were sent to me by my mom's close friend, Andrea. She has a bookstagram that I'll link down below, but it's Andrea Janelle Reads. She sent me nine books, nine books that I can read and send back to her. And I'm just so excited because I'm taking my time. I'm getting to know her reading tastes and I'm really, really enjoying it. I'm so excited to have these books and to have her recommendations. She also sent me lots of little bookish items like some bookish candles, some bookmarks, some book sleeves. I'm absolutely obsessed. She makes bookmarks, so she sent me some homemade ones. So let's talk about the books she sent me. First, she sent me Dead Until Dark by Charlene Harris. And this is the series that inspired the show True Blood. I haven't heard anything about this, but I think it's gonna be really cool and perfect for October. It looks very spooky and kind of vampire-y. Oh yeah, it says on the back here that this man is a vampire with a bad reputation and is being suspected of a murder. And she kind of falls in love with him and is living her life with him when all of this goes down. So it seems very cool, very interesting. And I'm hoping to squeeze it into my October TBR. The other book that I'm hopeful to get to this month is Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan. I also had only heard a little bit of this. I'd seen other booktubers reading it, but I'm excited to get into it. It is a story, a young adult fantasy story that says it's about a girl named Nadia who hears the whispers of gods inside of her head, a prince surrounded by desperate suitors and deadly assassins, a monster hidden behind pale tortured eyes and a smile that cuts like a knife. The paths of these three characters become entwined during a centuries long war filled with sinners and saints, magic and mystery, and a star-crossed romance that threatens to tip the scales between dark and light forever. It seems like it's gonna be such a great book and I love this cover. It's absolutely beautiful. Next, we have The Falconer by Elizabeth May. And this is a young adult fantasy and it's about um, a daughter of a Marquess who hunts fairies and she basically has to kind of live her life around having two separate lives. One as a Marquess's daughter and one as a fairy hunter. It seems maybe like a historical fiction as well. And I love books that are set in kind of a Renaissance time, which it looks from the cover like maybe this one will be. I don't know, it sounds really great. And if Andrea recommended it to me, I am sure that I'm gonna love it. Next is Sky in the Deep by Adrian Young. I haven't heard anything about this, so I'm gonna read it. Part Wonder Woman, part Vikings, and all heart. Ooh, a Viking story. I love that. So it's about 17-year-old Elin who is fighting against a different clan. And her whole life is just fighting and survival. Oh, so her brother betrays her. And she's basically, like, fighting against her brother now. It sounds like a very beautiful coming-of-age story. We're set in the time of Vikings where 
she is being tested on her loyalty and on her love of her family as well as the love of maybe another person in the book. It sounds beautiful. I love it. Next is Romanov by Nadine Brands. And this is an Anastasia retelling. I love the story of Anastasia. I think that this is going to be beautiful. And I'm hoping to read this in December because Anastasia really reminds me of that cold, wintry Russian feel. It seems like there's magic, maybe a forbidden romance, and like a fake death or a perceived death plot going on. It really sounds beautiful and it looks beautiful. I'm so excited to read this in the winter when it starts to get cold. Next is Caraval by Stephanie Garber. And this is a young adult fantasy where there is a game that happens every year. It's called Caraval. And the main character, Scarlet, is sad because you have to be invited to this competition in order to go watch the competition at Caraval happen. And she's never been invited. Her father is sending her off to be married. And so she's sure now that she's going to be gone, she'll never get to go. Then she gets an invitation along with her sister Tella to go to Caraval and watch the competition. As soon as they get there, her sister Tella is kidnapped and it turns out that the entire competition this year centers around Tella's kidnapping. Scarlet believes that Caraval's all a game and that it's not real, like there's no, there's no real danger, but the longer she's there, the more she's starting to think that the danger is real. I've heard fantastic things about this. I think this cover is stunning as well, and I'm really looking forward to reading it. Next up, an adult fantasy, House of Earth and Blood, the Crescent City series by Sarah J. Mass. I was never a big Sarah J. Mass fan. I didn't read a lot of Sarah J. Mass. I think I maybe read one book, but even then I'm not sure. I may have missed her entirely, but this is her first adult fantasy novel, and it is a fairy story, I think. I don't really want to know a whole lot about this. I'm not going to look it up. Everybody has talked about it. It sounds like an epic fantasy that involves fairies and murder, love, freedom. And it sounds like our main character, Bryce, is left alone after a demon murders all of her closest friends and she's trying to avenge their deaths. I'm going to stop reading the synopsis there because I really just want to be surprised and go into this not really knowing anything and just take it all in, experience the world a little bit at a time. Next we have The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Audier. I have seen the beautiful by Renee Audier being talked about a ton on booktube, but not The Wrath and the Dawn, maybe because it's a little bit older. So this sounds like it's going to be another like avenging death story where this girl decides to avenge her friend's death by agreeing to marry this evil man who's killing people. And she goes in thinking, I'm not gonna be the one who dies, I'm gonna be the one who ends this reign of terror once and for all. I don't know much about it. Um, I've heard of Renee Audier is a fantastic author. And it seems like this is going to be another one that I just take my time with and get really invested in. It's inspired by the book A Thousand and One Nights, so I think that it's going to be awesome. I've been loving retellings recently, and this is Renee Audier's debut novel, so I'm excited to read this first before reading The Beautiful because I like to read books by authors kind of in order from earliest to latest because I tend to like their later works better, but I want to enjoy their earlier works. So if I read this and I really enjoy it, I know that I'll probably really, really enjoy The Beautiful. And the last this month, <laughs> finally, <laughs> we've reached the end. Last this month is Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore. This is a historical fiction romance. It's a League of Extraordinary Women novel, and it's set in England in 1879, where Annabelle Archer is one of the first female students at Oxford University. She's recruiting men to champion the rising women's suffrage movement, and so she's trying to get the Duke of Montgomery to support her. And it turns into a romance where they're both kind of trying to get something out of the other person and a romance blossoms. I've heard this is steamy. I've heard this is wonderful. I love historical fiction romance and I'm really, really, really looking forward to getting into this one. That is going to be all for me today, friends. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Please comment down below what books you bought last month and what books I've mentioned today that you're also excited about reading so I know which ones to move up my TBR. Please like, comment, subscribe, share this video with anyone you think would enjoy it, and I will see you next time. Bye, friends.